Gorilla Physics. Yeah. So I'm going to talk you through Hooke's Law. Hooke's Law states that force is proportional to extension. I've got a graph here, a straight line graph with force on the y-axis and extension, delta x, on the x-axis. Delta means change in. The gradient of that graph is k. It's the stiffness or the spring constant in newtons per meter. And the area under the graph would be the elastic strain energy. You can see the equation there at the top in blue. F equals k delta x. I've annotated this graph here. It's the same idea, the same graph, but it goes a little bit further. I've annotated it with uh, P, E, and Y. P is called the limit of proportionality. That's the point at which a spring stops obeying Hooke's law. It's no longer proportional. F is no longer proportional to delta X. E is the elastic limit. Elastic limit is where if we unload this spring now, then it will no longer return to its original shape. We say it's got to have a plastic change, and a change which will not be reversed. And Y is the yield point where that spring or ball or anything, if we're squashing the spring or stretching the spring, that's the point at which it no longer behaves the same. It's broken, in other words, it's yielded. It's changed um, and it will, does not have the same properties anymore. It will not probably be as strong, in which case, well, you'll get a lot more extension for little or no extra force. And then down here, I've just got some examples of different spring constants and how they represent on the graph. So the steepest line is double the spring constant of the middle line. So the middle line has a spring constant k, the, the uh, steeper line has a spring constant 2k. The shallower line has a spring constant half k. Now on the right here is how to achieve those spring constants if we had the same springs. So the spring on its own has a spring constant k, the spring um, set up in parallel has a spring constant of 2k, and the spring set up in series or end to end has a spring constant of half k, it's half as stiff as just one spring on its own. So you remember me saying that the elastic strain energy was the area underneath the graph. We can actually use that to derive a new formula. So bear with. Here we go. Our um, elastic strain energy, E L, E elastic, is the area underneath a force extension graph. So we can write an equation for that because if it's a proportion, proportional section, it's a triangle. So that's going to be a half base times height, or a half force times delta x. So the elastic strain energy is half force times delta x. We also know at that point, during that section of the graph, our force is proportional to extension, or our Hooke's law in green there on the right, f is k delta x. So instead of f, let's substitute in k delta x. So you see on the next line, I've done e elastic is a half k delta x delta x, or this um, simplifies to E elastic is a half K delta X squared. It's a really useful formula if you know the spring constant and the extension. You can quickly work out the energy that's stored in something that's being stretched or squashed and is obeying Hooke's law during that point, importantly. I just want to show you is something called hysteresis. Hysteresis happens to certain materials when they're loaded or unloaded. You can see the red line shows the force extension graph as I'm loading this object. Let's say it's an elastic band, and this is something which normally happens to polymers, anything made out of longer fibres. So unloading it has a different shape to the green line when we're unloading. And remember I said to you that the area underneath a force extension graph was the elastic strain energy. Well that means when loading it, it has more elastic strain energy stored in it than when you were unloading. And that difference is the shaded area in between the lines. That means some energy has gone missing somewhere, and as we know, we can't just get rid of energy. Energy is not created or destroyed, thermodynamics 1. That energy goes towards something else. That hysteresis is energy loss due to heating, or delta Q, of the rubber as it's stretched and unstretched.